Hey everybody, this is Sean B. Bradley, president of Deal Synergy and the creator of the Millionaire Car Salesman Group. So I got a special guest in here, but before I put that on there, so this is the Millionaire Car Salesman Group and I am interviewing my daughter, Tiana Mick. Hello. Okay, she wants to kill me because this is unexpected. Have a seat, T. All right, so this is basically going to be just like us we're at the home office here so you leave you live in Reading Pennsylvania but you are here at the Bradley compound with you and mom and me and uh, tell everybody what's going on tomorrow um, we're gonna be on-site training at a dealership are you not training at your dealership right no okay good so let me explain what's going on here so Tiana has been training how long you've been training for about a month at the dealership mm -hmm. okay so she's been training at Savage 61 um, for about a month she's going through multiple training Cardone on demand training Bradley on demand training she's going through both of them and can you share the cool things that like who have you spoken to like like mommies and my resources like that kind of work with you um. Tony Ann. So the billion dollar girl, Tony Ann Fardette. Yeah. So um, let's go for that real quick. So, uh, the, you know, just paraphrase a little bit. What did you kind of learn from your, your personal coaching session with Tony Ann? Um, definitely the, one of the major things was just being a woman in the business, in the auto industry. And um, kind of dealing with like, kind of like a stigmatism that, you know, women, it's not really a woman's business and it's more male dominated. So things like that, obviously, on like a, you know, personal side. And then she just sent me some phone scripts and different things because she thinks we should be really good on the phones. So showroom salespeople should be really good on the phones. Yeah. So Tony Ann is amazing because she went from a part-time receptionist to basically being, you know, the billion dollar girl. Isn't that, isn't that inspiring? Yeah. And I don't know if you, you probably don't know this, but I talked to Tony Ann today and Tony Ann is actually going to be at the Internet Sales 20 Group. She's speaking on like powerful women in the automotive industry. She's one of the strongest female executives on the planet, in my opinion, so she's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so you had Tony Ann training you. Who else did you have training you? Um, L.A. Williams. So L.A. Dub, the blindfold master. So uh, what was that like with L.A.? Is it any fun? Yeah. Okay, so tell um, us what you got from, uh, from L.A. Um, I mean, a lot of different things from just kind of being open and being comfortable and just practicing like speaking to the customer like you're not nervous at all Cause that's confidence probably, right yeah that's probably the hardest thing is to kind of speak with confidence because you really don't know who they are and like what they're going to throw at you so you kind of got to react as fast as you can okay so you got you got some personal training with tony and fordette you got some personal training with la williams who else did you have on there um you talked to Corey Mosley a little bit, right? Yeah, I was about to say Corey Mosley. Okay, so Corey Mosley, who's an amazing trainer and an author. Did you speak to Josh Lear yet? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Josh is coming up on a marketing level. Did you speak to Frank Crenidia? yet? No. So I mean, I spoke to him before. But... Yeah, but Frank's going to do a session with you, so Frank is really awesome. And uh, did you speak to Mama? No. Karen, you didn't speak to Karen yet? Not about business. Not about business, okay. And so um, so let's talk about this. So you've been at the dealership about a month. What type of stuff have you been doing at the dealership? So have you gone through Chrysler training yet? Yeah. Are you finished? Yeah. Um, I just have to have like on-site training for um, customer relationships, keeping in touch with the customer, basically um, extending the, basically talking to each other outside of the deal, just like to get those referrals and stuff leading up and follow-ups and um, just different things like that that I'm gonna go I have to drive and do kind of like on-site training with that with the representative so when do you think that you'll get your Chrysler certification that's gonna come up soon or um, yeah definitely okay and then you basically have you're waiting for your sales license right yes okay so can you explain because some people like in New Jersey they don't have to have sales <laughs> license like you tell them the laws in Pennsylvania how does that work um, I don't know everything about it I just know that it's kind of like a real estate license how you sign up and apply for the same thing it's just like you have to pass not like a written test just a, basically the, if they want to bestow upon you the right to sell cars. The right to sell cars. All right, so so you're going through that process. And there's somebody else, too. So this is pretty cool. So Cameron Moore from Build-A-Brand. How awesome yeah. is Cameron? No, he's, like, the best. Yeah, he's really... So shout out to Cameron. Appreciate you. And so, T, I, I'm seeing all the changes on here. So your website that, that um, you have, which is a Build-A-Brand website, is T... 
tgotyourkeys.com and then it's gonna be like hashtag get your keys from T, correct? Yeah. So that's the whole branding. And so I see that you did you took a lot of um, advice from Cameron and from me and you changed all the pictures. So can you tell us what your strategy's been on here? Like this is really cool. So I love the pictures that you have in here. See, they're 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 obviously personal, they're not stock photos. Um, so what was you, what were you trying to go for? Just like personable, like car girl, correct? Yeah, just okay. different angles outside of the cars, inside the cars. I mean, they're a fur and earn on like an eighty-eight thousand dollar car. So. <laughs> That's pretty. <laughs> so what was that about? Um, well, it says like refer and earn. So yeah. I took a picture in the red eye Hellcat, which is like eighty-eight thousand. So That's pretty awesome, right? Yeah. It's a sweet car. All right, so so in your this so this is your own personal website that you have. It's integrated to the inventory. So like this is your dealership's inventory from Savage Sixty One, and when you click it, okay, so this is a VDP, which is a vehicle display page, right? And so you are on every one of the pages because this is your own personal website. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yep. All right, and then so you have it's got home. You don't have any reviews because you don't take any customers. You got your own blog. Can you can you show me? Can you tell us here? So you you actually wrote a couple blog posts, right? Yeah. Oh wow, so these are original. So you have, I'm seeing one, two, three, four blog posts. So tell us about the, the blog posts that you did. Um, I just did different ones that I think that customers or people my age or maybe older would like to read about, like how to change a tire. How old do you tell everybody? Uh, 19. Okay, so you're 19 years old. And so, go ahead, what was the ones? Um, so the first one I think is how to change a tire. Yes, yeah, 60% of people can't change a tire. Yeah, because a lot of, Yo, me either, a lot of millennials... <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of millennials and people my age really don't know how to change a tire. They end up calling their dad or their uncle. Or so that means when I can't change my tire, I can call my daughter? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So, so uh, I, I basically just wrote out like a step guide of like how to change a tire. So this is kind of cool here because already you, I'm going to, I haven't even hit it yet, but you know, so that should make it, I think nine, but you've had eight people you know, it's brand new that are that are clicking on this, that are liking this. So you've got, the first one is people, you know, 60% of people can't change the tire. When is the best time to buy a car? Put in the customer first and the sales second. Uh, washing your car during cold winter months. So this is actually relevant content. Where did you get the ideas for this stuff? Just off the top of your head or from build a brand? Or um, from... Yeah, definitely Cameron. His site is set up pretty good. And I just saw that he was putting up things that I would like to read. So I was thinking like, if... I just want to put out what I would want to read and hope to attract people like me so that we can network together and I can put out content that they want to read and then I get positive feedback because I'm not trying to catch people that aren't even on my interest level. That makes a lot of sense. So I just think this is amazing. You haven't even hit the floor yet. You have your own full-blown website, T got, you know, your keys .com. You're already creating blog posts. Now with these blog posts, you're planning on syndicating these all over your social media, correct? Mm -hmm. So right yeah, now- I posted some on Facebook already. When I posted a new blog, I put the link to my website and then I'd say like, check out my blog and I'll put like little funny pictures for people to, cause like, I mean, I'm, I like pictures to see, not just like stock images, just like funny pictures. So to change a spare tire, I just put like funny pictures so that people will be like, oh, I get it. And then they just get more like kind of clickbait, I guess. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to be for. All right. And then next you also have like the referrals, which I think is really awesome on the site. Your dealership gives, what is it, $200 or 250. Two, two, 250 So explain your referral program at your dealership. So we have this referral program called Send Me a Friend, and basically you just sign up, and I can sign up anyone with an email and a phone number and their name, and if they buy a car from me, and you send your friend, like, so say Sean wanted to make a Send Me a Friend for my mom, and said, um, I'm sending you a friend, her name's Karen, um, and you send me her information, and she buys a car from me, then I'll write you a check for $250. That's awesome. Daughter, you haven't seen this yet. I'm going to show you this. If you could take a look over here, right? So we have a dealer who's going to be at the Internet Sales 20 group with you. He, he's, um, and I show this a couple times in the group, but I know that you're working. You don't get to see this. So I'm just going to go to YouTube really quick. It's, um, so if it's YouTube, check this out. So it's Refer to Country Hill. So again, if you go, whoops, there we go. So if I go here. All you gotta type in is refer to Country Hill. I want you to see this video. Cause you could create this video cause you were pretty damn good in, in editing videos, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so watch this. And the dealer principal actually created this video. This the owner created this video. So it wasn't a, a, a production company. Now watch, so this is pretty simple. 
At Country Hill Motors, our promise is to treat your friends and family like ours. Starting now, Country Hill Motors is introducing a referral program that pays you cash. We'll pay you $200 when you refer a friend or family member who buys a car from Country Hill Motors. We'll pay you $100 when you refer a friend or family member who sells a car to Country Hill Motors. There's no limit to the number of people you can refer. Visit countryhill.com before your referral shows up and fill so out. The you could probably create a video like that, you know, with some with an app and what type of what type of apps do you use? Um, like Final Cut Pro and iMovie. So Final Cut Pro and iMovie and everything, and you're pretty damn good with it, right? So that video, just you're not gonna believe this, but Julio works at Country Hill, the salesperson. In one week, T, he had 16 referrals and he spotted four cars, he loaded four cars in the first week that they launched the program. And so what I like about your website is that you have the ability to have people go here and join this site. You know, I mean, they, they, they can refer people on here. And then here's what I like though, is the bout. So you could share who gave you little, 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 little tips on this, right? Um, Cameron, no. <laughs> oh! Daughter? Uh, Sean. All right, good. So tell us the strategy you have. Can I read this, Ella? Yeah. I think this is amazing because I, I, you know, I'm going to read it, but then I want you to tell why you, you wrote this. You wrote this yourself. It says, hello, I'm Tiana Mick, and it's nice to meet you. I'm a 19-year-old college student who resides in Reading, Pennsylvania. You may, so, you may also know my town by the notorious game of Monopoly, the, the Reading Railroad. I currently take classes at Reading area community college and work working towards my forensic science degree where my where my CSI fans at I've been in the National Honor Society throughout high school and graduated with over a 4.0 GPA. I'm a proud and dedicated cat mom of four who enjoys watching Netflix and playing video games in my free time. Message me to get your gamer tag and we can play together. I'm brand new to the automotive field and would love to help others uh, through what I thought to believe a painful process. However, I have personally come up uh, with a way to make the car buying experience fun, fast, and easy. Tiana, make your car grow at Savage 61 Dodge Jeep Ram. Explain that. I freaking love this, but like talk to talk us through your 19 year old, you know, millennial or have you. So tell us why this bio. Um, because I feel like, I mean, me personally, when yes. I, when I see a bio and it says like, oh, I graduated from here and there, I'm kind of like, I don't really care. <laughs> right. So unless you're kind of breaking the fourth wall, like Deadpool and like things like movies like that, where you're like, oh, we're in a movie. It's like, oh, this is my bio. It's like, you're not supposed to say this is my bio or hi, it's nice to meet you. Right. Your bio is just basically supposed to be like, I graduated from here. I worked here. I did this. And I was like, no one really cares. So I kind of just wanted to put the stuff that people would really care about and like, if you said, like, you know, I said, like, where's my CSI fans at? Because, you know, I like CSI, I like crime scene, you know, things like that. And, and you're going to school for forensic science. Yeah. You know, so exactly. So, and I didn't really want to, I kind of bragged about, like, my honors and things like that. But, and then I kind of hooked them again when I said cat mom, I play video games. And then you kind of just, you know, things like that to catch their attention and break the fourth wall better. I think that's brilliant, and and a part of this that we talked about is that you want to humanize yourself. You know, yeah. you don't want to turn on a list that I sell thirty cars a month, I sell fifty cars a month. Because to me, that's like basically like trophies, like deer heads. You know, if you're yeah. a hunter, and so you're you're basically this profile. You build common ground. If if anybody's a gamer or into CSI or college or has a college kid or have you, they can relate yeah. to you. So you humanize yourself. You, you clearly articulate that you're not a scumbag car salesman. You're an automotive professional. You're new to the industry. And I love the line. And I, I wish I could take credit for this. All you. You know, I, I love it right here. I'm brand new to the automotive field, which is good. Because people, like, honestly, it's good to let people know that you're brand new to the automotive field. And, um, and this right here is powerful. Let's see. I am brand new to the automotive field and would love to help others through what I thought to believe a painful process. However, I've personally come up with a way to make a car buying experience fun, fast, and easy. Praise the Lord. That's what everybody wants to hear. A fun, non-hassle, you know, uh, car buying experience. So for me, if I look at this, I'm going to see that you are, you know, a young college kid that's working in, a, in the automotive industry. You know, <laughs> you like cats, video games, and you know, you're, you're, you're a good, nice person. Let me buy a yeah. car from T because I feel, I feel comfortable. I'm not going to get like, you Taking know, advantage exactly. Of and also because since I'm so young, like, I feel like people would like to buy from me more just because they can relate to me and they know that there's not that pressure of, okay, this is, you know, 
if I'm not gonna buy this car, th- there goes his mortgage, there goes this, there goes that. Like, all I have to pay for is, like, my car and my phone bill. <laughs> so, I mean, the pressure isn't really, like, all there, and they're just, like, helping the little person, the little man, low income out, so... <laughs> It's better to give the money, I guess, for the ninety nine percent than the one, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is this is this is interesting. Just like I just love kind of hearing this stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna because I know it's late. And we have a big morning, which we'll tell everybody about in a second. But so tell me, you know, obviously being very diplomatic, right? Okay. What's it like working in a car dealership? It, you know, is it different from what you thought? Yeah. Okay, in, in what type of ways? Um, I don't know. Every time I walked into a car dealership, I felt like a lot of people had things to do, but I had to learn that um, if there's no customers, especially like with the snow and the rain, and like you kind of have to depend on the weather for your income, which is kind of different. Um, and I don't know. I felt like a lot of people were doing a lot more, but I, <laughs> now that I see behind the scenes, you kind of just realize like it's just like, little smoke and mirrors you kind of people make themselves look busy and they don't really do anything productive but i feel like if you're going to be there then you might as well like put all your effort in see i'm going to give you a little tip here um what you just said i disagree with the 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 weather you really didn't weather because you know frank crinity who's group frank is kind of famous for in pennsylvania where you sell cars he sold eight cars in a blizzard yeah. You know, and so again, a lot of people think that, oh, I'm dependent on the weather. Dr. Covey, which you know, me and your mom are all about, are all about carry your own weather, meaning don't worry about it raining or snowstorming or any other stuff. Let the regular people out there worry about that stuff. If Frank could sell eight cars in a blizzard, you could at least sell one. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. What he did was, and I don't want to tell, take a story because I don't know how he did it because I never sold eight cars in a blizzard. Shit, I never sold a couple cars in a blizzard. I sold one car in a blizzard before. That's my claim to fame. And he went to the grocery store, him and his, you know, one of his people, and they bought like a bunch of, like all the eggs, bunch of milk, all this stuff, and they shot videos that, you know, because they thought, listen, if there's a blizzard, people are not going to be at work, they're going to be stranded at home, this is a perfect time to call people and get people. So he shot these videos, and it basically said, listen, today is the best time to buy a car, it's a blizzard sale, and matter of fact, I know you're probably thinking, you got to go get your milk and your eggs, no you don't, I bought it all, so if you come buy a car for me, you're going to get these groceries, and it was hysterical, and so that's the paradox. Paradigm. The paradigm is you've got to carry your own weather with you, darling. You know what I'm saying? So, and I'm not saying this to my daughter. I'm saying this to anybody that I train is that, you know, don't ever let anything, whether it's the weather, influence your income, your livelihood. But what you just said too, I would say is also accurate. Most salespeople are not productive. Some of them might be lazy, but I think most of it, most people are not trained and conditioned, you know, with time maximization being effective. And so CRMs are not set up the right way for most dealerships. So if the CRM is not set up the right way, nobody knows how to use the CRM, people are not trained for time maximization, time management, then they, they, they are running around, some people, doing things that they think are opportunities or valuable. That's why Covey says in the third habit, I'm going to translate, be careful of distractions disguised as opportunities because they think they're doing stuff that's valuable. But don't get me wrong. There are the people that are out there that I see all over the country that are not productive. They wait for the magic up bus to come through. So if you don't have a, a prospect in front of you, you know, right that second, then you need to be motivating and maximizing your time on marketing advertising, branding, networking. If you're not doing marketing, advertising, branding, you know, PR, then you need to be training, 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 practice, drilling, rehearsing, practice, drilling, rehearsing. If you're not doing that, then you better be, you know, uh, get, you know, doing walk rounds and you, you've got to just constantly be cycling through. And this is where car sales is like your own business. Can you see how hard me and your mom worked, right? all these years your whole life if we can you imagine if we were like some salespeople just waited for magic shit to happen we wouldn't be living you know we wouldn't be no millionaire car salesman i don't think we'd be hundred air car salesmen in this house you know i mean we'd be broke as shit you know waiting for the government to give us you know like whatever uh they're gonna give us break off a little piece to keep us happy but we can't we work i joke around i work like i'm an ugly stripper you know i work like shit is rough right and so i work like i'm broke so i don't so i'm never gonna be broke 
and people don't have that mentality in dealerships. You know, they'll just bitch and complain, you know, uh, about being broke. I just interviewed this amazing gentleman, Mike DeFalco, from um, uh, Raceway Kia in Freehold, New Jersey. This dude made a half a million dollars to on the showroom floor. He sold at 1.80 units, but he averages like 45, 50. And check this out. He went and, and opened up his own used car lot. Are you ready for this? He got rid of the business because he made more money working as a sales consultant because the dealership takes care of the inventory, dealership takes care of the financing, dealer takes care of the back end, dealer, 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 dealer. All he's got to do is sell the cars and make his cut. Do you see what I'm saying? So what I want you to realize that it's not just selling cars. Selling cars is one thing. So selling cars is one thing. The next thing would be, you know, you have to be great at marketing, advertising, branding. You gotta be great at time management. You've gotta be great at your finances. You gotta be able to know how to invest in yourself on a website. You gotta know how to invest in yourself in paid Facebook ads, in in technology, in self-education, in books, in audiobooks, and all this stuff. So you have to really look at this. The way that I would I would say this that I wish that if I could I look at you as my daughter and I and I wish that I had somebody to say this to me when I was you know 22 years old because I got into the business years after you did when I was your age I had just entered federal prison mm -hmm. so the people that don't know I, I lost six years of my life I lost three years when I was 12 to 15 and then from 19 to 22 I was in in federal prison so when you start selling cars now I was already probably almost a half a year into my for my, my bid you know when I came home I was 22 years old if I could go back to tell Sean 22 year old I tell you what I'm telling you right now treat this like it's your own business pretend like you just invested you know five fifty thousand dollars whatever thousand dollars into your own use car lot, right? How would you run it? Practice with the dealership's resources. They've given you all the inventory, new car inventory, used car inventory, papers, paper clips, pens, computers, CRM. If you had to have your own business, all of that shit costs money. Me and your mom spend millions and millions and millions of dollars in all the stuff at Dealer Synergy. You get to practice being a real business owner. Because I'm gonna tell you this right now, Ali Rada, Frank Crinity, those guys average over 100 units a month. Those people sell more than what the average dealership sells in an entire month by themselves. Make sense? All right, so now, next thing I wanna go over is this. So tomorrow, I'm super excited is that before Tiana gets her sales license and hits the showroom floor, it's like, like for me, it's like a dream. You know what I mean? Like I'm super excited that I'm going to be able to spend the day tomorrow training, you know, training you. And so what the plan is, is that uh, she works in Pennsylvania in Reading, like the piece on the Monopoly board, the railroad station, right? But I have a bunch of Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram dealerships in New Jersey, but they're all the way by freaking New York. I've got Chevy dealerships a lot closer to the house, like 15 minutes. But um, what I want to do is I want to train you in your environment. I want to train you at a Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealership. So we've got a dealer group, the Nielsen Group. I contacted the VP of, uh, of the company. He's a really good friend of ours and a great client. And I said, can I use your dealership like a Hollywood student? To train my daughter. He's like, absolutely. I said, listen, here's what we're going to do. You know, because you've been so kind, let me use your store just to train my daughter all day. I'm going to role play with you. Um, then all your new hires. Next thing I know, they've got like 20 new hires from multiple of their stores that are going to be training tomorrow. So just curious, what is it? What do you think about that? I'm going to spend the entire day with you tomorrow drilling and role playing the road to the sale. Everything from greeting the customer on a lot in the cold, which yeah. because it's snowing. So we're going to be able to do that tomorrow. Yay. Everything from greeting somebody in the showroom transitioning from the showroom or the lot to your desk, qualifying them and going through the road to the sale. What do you think about us being able to practice that together? Um, it'll be a lot better than watching videos on my computer. <laughs> yes. And we do, is it going to make you feel more comfortable that role playing with me instead of doing it at your store with your coworkers, your managers? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, and I feel like certain people, I guess, knowing that you're my dad. Yeah. It's just kind of like scared to tell me like what it is what it's not but i know like you're not you're just gonna be like tiana you're dumb that's not what it is <laughs> i wouldn't say like, dumb okay. <laughs> but i say you, that doesn't sound right or what have you but yeah absolutely so we're gonna be drilling and drilling and i i want you to feel comfortable because 
yes, first of all, at first, I'm going to make you feel very comfortable if it's me, but then I'm going to train you like I, you know, I'm getting paid $10,000 a day, like my normal rate to train somebody. I'm going to train you on, on how to up a customer and hopefully, you know, we're going to be able to get a chance to, you know, like take some real customers tomorrow. It'll be freaking awesome. For me, this yeah. is like, I love this. I don't get the opportunity to train new hires because I'm training in departments, BDCs or showrooms, but we're going to go back to the basics. And, oh, here we go. Guess what? Brian Chapman, who is the founder of Build a Brand, he's a general manager. He's a very dear friend and a client of ours. He just said on here, uh, uh, Tiana, I'll be available if Tiana has any questions. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so <laughs> so uh, there you go. So Brian, uh, you know, yeah, obviously about Build a Brand. So Brian, so I don't know if you saw, but she's actually crushing her Build a Brand website. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice tomorrow how to, when you greet a customer, for example, you know, it, when somebody says, I'm just looking, uh, Brian and the rest of the Millionaire Carcels room, I'm gonna teach Tiana in real time how to handle it. And one of my instant rebuttals is my digital business card. So I'm not gonna go through all the details because we're gonna live stream it tomorrow. But Brian is the obviously the inventor of Build a Brand, so he could teach you on a general manager's perspective and on the genius behind Build a Brand. But Brian, if you get a chance, if you could take a look at my daughter's website on your platform, tgotyourkeys.com, uh, take a look at that and any feedback. Now, remember, she hasn't hit the floor yet, so there's certain things that she doesn't have pictures of customers yet, except for us. You know, So if any advice you could give, that'd be great. But tomorrow, we are going to go through the entire road to the sale process. Can you just tell me, what, what would you like to get out of the training for me? Because this is what I ask some of my clients. I said, say, listen, time is money. You just drove, daughter, I'm so proud of you, several hours just to get from Reading to, you know, New, like New Jersey, South Jersey. Now we're going to drive two more hours. So this is like a four-hour voyage just to get training. Mm -hmm. And so it's your day off. You work hard, you know, you're training or anything like that. So on your day off, for it to be worth it to you, what would you like to get out of the training tomorrow? What would you like to learn or get comfortable with? Um, just talking to the customers because I feel like no matter what, the prices are, I mean, the customer might say, like, the price is the only thing that kind of matters, but really, it's everything that leads up to that, how you talk to them, how you treat them, how you connect with them, because if someone connects with you and the numbers are a little higher, they might just want to connect with you because they like who you are. So I just want to be confident with talking to customers. Ah, you know what? I am so... I mean, like, this is an insight from a 19-year-old young woman. It's correct. The rules of engagement, engagement haven't changed in the last 20 years. It's sell yourself, sell the, do you remember? Sell yourself. Sell, sell the dealership. Sell your dealership. And then the product, mm -hmm. right? So what I'm saying by that is because, let's just say because you sell, you know, Jeeps, for example. So Jeep Grand Cherokees are great vehicles. They're high demand. There's a hot truck. Um, and so they could buy a Jeep anywhere. So the two things that they can't get everywhere is you and your dealership. So the rules of engagement are sell yourself, build common ground, get people to like you, trust you, believe you. And like you just said, getting comfortable in the dialogue. That's just experience and comfort level. And we'll go over that all tomorrow. And it's just repetition, 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 repetition. People realize, think that if they watch a training video or they, they, they watch something live once or twice, that's it. Now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna put you like out there just a little bit. Do you remember what one of your favorite cartoons was we saw the play? Um, Frozen? Frozen, yes. Okay, so when you were younger and your sister is younger, you used to be able to sing or talk the entire movie, right or wrong? Yeah. And so that's what my, my benchmark is. And if you think about it, honey, is that, you know, is that when you know your process that much, when like when you watch a Disney movie like Frozen and you love it and and as the as the as the cartoon or the the movie or whatever is actually going through you know the entire script of the movie no, you right you should know your process as good as your favorite rap song yeah, there you go there okay so she's older now so she doesn't want to talk about Frozen but yeah <laughs> that's the same no doubt you want to know you want to know your processes as well as you love your favorite rap rap song I love that and that's the thing is when you could flow with it you jump in at any point yes you finish it. Like when it just comes on the radio and you just hear, this is why I'm hot. You're just like, this is what, this is what. You don't, <laughs> yes, you don't, you don't play it from the beginning. You yeah. just pick up where the customer is. I love it. Exactly. See, that's the way your mind is wired. That's, that's exactly it. And people think that script is bad like word tracks whether they're mine or another trainers or another authors or whatever those are there to give you the foundational but you know from watching mama in the entertainment industry and in the music industry and whatnot is that 
when you are a recording artist, when you're a singer, you could take a song with your ad libs, with your 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 uh, harmonies. You could you could make that track your own. I mean, how many different ways have you heard the Star Spangled Banner or the the um, the national anthem or whatever? You know what I mean? Like it's crazy how a different spins a rock spin, a jazz spin, a country spin, but it's the same. You know. Uh, Star Spangled Banner, makes sense? It's you're making it yours. Same thing as this, after you mastered your process and you know as well as you know your, your favorite rap song, exactly, I freaking love that. I'm using it in training, babe. Okay, babe? Um, then you could start adding different things as long as you don't compromise the principles and the foundation of the scripts, why it's there. Like you said, I, man, you didn't even realize what, what fire you just dropped. You had said like, this is why it's hot, how you just jumped in. What people don't realize, I just trained a dealership that's very, very talented, but I asked a salesperson, how many steps in your road to the sale? 10, what's step seven? They didn't know off the top of their head what the step was. Yeah. That's why when we drilled your little brother, you know, forwards and backwards and sent out for the phone process over the summer, remember the Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Yeah. Is that if you could memorize your process, your steps, if you have a 10 step road to the sale, forwards, backwards, you need to know what step one, step two, step three, step four, all the way through 10 is. You need to know them inside and out, why, what, how, verbiage, verbatim, et cetera. That way, because if a prospect pulls you off, you, you, most people can't get back onto the place where they left off because they don't know where their damn step was. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but you said, but if you know that your process, just like you know your rap song, you could, you don't need to go rewind the song from the, from the beginning to sing it. Yeah. You could just jump right in. Like you didn't even skip a beat. Make sense? Yeah. All right. So I can't wait to train you tomorrow. And thank you for being such a super duper sport by hanging out with me and, and giving some love in the group. So let's be out. Take care, honey.